Hello guys, this is Vaish. So today, August 15th, Independence Day. Uh, I have already put out a video on the importance of August 15th. It is not just India's Independence Day. Five other countries also have got independent on the same day. Somewhere French colonies, somewhere UK colonies, somewhere Japanese colonies. They all have got independent on the same day. So a separate three-minute video I have put today already. Please watch that video also. And then we will watch today's video. Today, because it's Independence Day, the editorials and the newspaper completely is flooded with lot of patriotic articles, including articles by uh, film actors. You can tell Kamal Hassan has written an article. And then there is uh, uh, this Shashi Tharoor writing an article. And that is the main article also which we will discuss because uh, he has actually uh, uh, criticized some statement which uh, Prime Minister has told. You can see this picture, uh, mother of democracy, meaning uh, when G20 summit we are going to host in September and the G20 world leaders will come to India. So Modi told that uh, welcome all G20 leaders to the mother of democracy, meaning the kind of the origin of democracy. But Shashi Tharoor criticized it. Shashi Tharoor told that India is not the mother of democracy. You have no right to tell that. There is other countries where democracy was already there. You can point out to Rig Veda and historic things and all, but there is no clear proof for that. So that in detail, because many factual prelims facts are there in that uh, article I am discussing. Else, usually political articles I won't discuss, but here a lot of prelims facts are there. And we will discuss everything, even the headlines I will tell you. But before that, uh, first I will uh, tell about the test series. In the last 48 hours, we have got lot of enrollments. That too, I am updating. You can see in my WhatsApp, the states from which uh, enrollments are coming. From southern states, we usually get uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and uh, Andhra Telangana. We always get lots of enrollments every year because we primarily uh, cover English medium. And I don't think there is any other English medium institute who does your justice to your preparation in such a timetable mode uh, test series. Okay, meaning hour by hour, day by day, that kind of timetable nobody is giving. Maybe that is the reason we used to get students. But this year, we are noticing that from northern states and eastern and northeast also, like Meghalaya, Manipur, Assam and then Orissa, West Bengal, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, and this side, uh, I think it will be from Gujarat, Rajasthan, we have lesser students. We have from UP and Uttarakhand, we have Jammu and Kashmir, we have Pondicherry, we have students. Okay, last year we had one student from Lakshadweep also. So, the Vaishai's reach is expanding batch after batch. And so, we are very happy and we would like to thank you in uh, showing your participation there in the paid uh, courses. Same way in editorials also, these free initiatives, please make use of it. Okay, this is much more important also because editorial is covering your main answers free of cost. Every GS 1, 2, 3, 4 answers. One year, if you sit and watch this, almost your complete syllabus will get over. Okay, only optionals you may have to uh, separately prepare. And today, as I told, prelims facts also a lot of things we will discuss. So, we will see the headlines first before going uh, further. The first article is about uh, PM Usha scheme. This PM Usha scheme is actually an uh, education related scheme. The national education scheme uh, policy is going to be implemented or the government is trying to uh, quickly implement it. So the challenge is there. Many states are not approving of it and that we will discuss what is the reason. Okay. And then here again we will see uh, this one is a politics. Okay. Second one is a politics we won't discuss. Here they are telling about uh, uh, Hindutva, Hindu Rashtra, God Se versus Gandhi, BJP people killed uh, Gandhi. This kind of all historic anti-BJP art complete politics it is so this one is no use for your exam your politics interest if you want you can go and read it else I don't know why this much big column was allotted on an independence day for such an article okay then this one if you see Shashi Tharoor's article which I told that uh, mother of democracy he is criticizing but interestingly many factual points are there which is useful for exam that we'll discuss in detail and it's like an essay also it's written if you see the topic itself the headline itself democracy in India a gift and a warning Okay, so this kind of caption itself will come for your essay writing. So 250 marks you have to write. So here interesting points you will get. Okay, then here if you see uh, Kamal Hassan, the actor has written an article, East is awakening, meaning the Eastern side. Till now you are telling the West is dominating, USA and uh, uh, Europe were dominating. But now the East, India, China, we are all like this century itself is called Asian century and some people even tell it's an Indian century because the complete population is like youth population, majority youth population, skilling is happening, uh, investment is happening, uh, make in India is happening. So this every industry and factory want to set up their thing in India. So it's India is booming. India's economy is the only economy which is coming in the high, high GDP that you can see. When others are all are failing, European countries are in recession, India is the only country booming now. So that when you look carefully, okay, keeping aside all your politics and everything, you will understand the changes which are happening in India in the global stage as well. So that related, he has written something. So it's a patriotic article. It's not like any specific takeaway, for example. Then this one, if you see India West Indies cricket related article, we won't discuss. So in this full page, if you see only that education one scheme and the other page, we have the Shashi Tharoor democracy article. And here they have given because India at 76. 
the random charts meaning india versus brics countries india versus uh, the neighboring countries how it is performing in different different indicators they have put a random chart i didn't get it like useful for exam so again two articles is important and we'll discuss today okay so now again test series i'm reminding you one more time 7200 just send a hi okay hi like i am looking for test series i am looking for free classes i am looking for current affair packages whatever you want you tell that immediately we'll respond okay so in 24 hours 48 hours maximum it takes for your payment and get sending you the timetable every Everything takes 48 hours of time only so if you missed it please come and uh, whatsapp me immediately okay and uh, foundation videos is something meaning if you are not joining anything start with the foundation that 30 videos will give you the confidence that you don't need to go for coaching you don't need too much money you just can sit at home and study and still clear the upsc in the very first attempt so do all that everything in my whatsapp i'll uh, guide you okay so this first article india the mother of democracy takes charge of g20 presidency this being published here and there shashi tarur is not liking it okay Shashi Tharoor is criticizing it so we will see that what is the uh, things which he told so in the 76th year of our independence the prime minister's statements welcoming g20 delegates to the mother of democracy is plastered on billboards across the national capital so that language itself you can see is like it's like plastered and he don't like it okay so is this claim a boast without substance because we are telling, didn't we study in our school that Greece is the place where democracy originated? Okay. Uh, but again, both countries have its own point and he is a little bit taking that side also, India side also. And telling contrary to the linear narrative that uh, democracy was invented in ancient Athens. Athens is that ancient city of uh, uh, Greece. So, contrary to that, we can take uh, other things also. Okay. Like democratic government was more common in the ancient world than many believe. Even if the proportion of population participating in Athenian uh, democracy may have more extensive, meaning Athens or Greece, maybe they were more extensive, more people followed democratic model, but parallelly, many ancient places also were having uh, this thing. Okay, but that he is telling, one time he is telling good, one time he is telling bad. Now, for example, he is telling India's claims, how can you uh, do, because India's claims is not very clear. Rigveda, if you take, Okay, one of our Vedas, uh, most uh, ancient and most popular sacred text, you can tell. There they are telling something which is similar to this popular government or the democratic government. Okay, in Rig Veda, they are mentioning Gramini. Gramini, the village head employed by the king for civil and military purposes. So, this again, that Gramini term, this kind of terms is like UPSC's favorite. So, because I saw this, I thought we will discuss this. Else, I was about to ignore this article today. So, Rig Veda mentioned about Gramini, the village head, employed by the king for civil and military purposes, while the Atharva Veda, another Veda, refers to the institution of Sabha, Samiti, Bhabapati and Sab Sabkasad, okay, which is judicial functions, one officer. So, these terms and all, in every textbook, it is not there. So, this article, in case UPSC board notices, they feel like troubling you, they will put this, this as much the following, okay. So, note it down. So, there is no real uh, corroborating material evidence to authenticate a claim of democracy. Even though these things are there and we have some officers appointment and all, still we do not have proper proof for democracy is what Shashi Tharoor is telling in Indian context. Okay. Now, he is using Ambedkar. This uh, Shashi Tharoor and many people who are very clever, they always use Ambedkar whenever they have to criticize Hinduism, whenever they have to tell something which is, uh, meaning they don't want to praise Hinduism because if you praise Hinduism in any way, then because he is a Congress person, immediately the BJP people will be like, what happened to him? Okay, like how come he is talking our language? Because BJP people talks everything in Hindu, Hindutva angle. So, same way, whenever they want to criticize something, they will catch Ambedkar and they will tell Ambedkar tell the, told that, Ambedkar told this, Ambedkar writing is like that, because Ambedkar used to criticize everything and he himself uh, converted into uh, Buddhism because uh, uh, caste system was uh, very uh, bad, and, uh, bad and still going on in Hinduism. So, that way, this person will always catch Ambedkar. So, Ambedkar argument in favor of such practices uh, flourishing in the Buddhist era, a period contemporary to the Greek states, meaning when Greek states were flourishing, same time Buddhist era is going on in India. So, we also had some republic kingdoms, he is telling. Okay, we will tell you all these things. So, uh, when you think about Ambedkar, he is telling everybody thinks about this uh, three-piece suit he is wearing and a modern western kind of person, a vakil, a very uh, kind of, uh, that kind of person. Okay. So, but he was actually inspired from our traditional systems, our democratic practices of ancient stage, but not from Hinduic, Rig Vedic and all these things, but from the Buddhist era and Buddhist Sanghas and those groups which he had, the Buddhist groups where they come sit together. So, this chairman of the drafting committee of the Constituent Assembly, that is Ambedkar, remarked that some ancient states were republics. In those days, we had republics. Okay, That is, uh, Lichavis, who is in the northern Bihar and lower Nepal in the 5th and 6th century. Then the Mallas, who is in Kushinagara, okay, I think in UP. And then uh, Vaji or Vriji Confederation, which is in Vaishali. 
So early Indian republicism can be traced back to these uh, independent Gana Sanghas which appear to have existed between the 6th and the 4th century BC. So we had republics where some people are there uh, together like a head is there for the state and they will attend the public also at times. So those systems used to exist. Okay. Then Ambedkar referred to Vinay Pitaka. Vinay Pitaka we have then we have this Abhidhamma Pitaka. A lot of Pitakas you will study in our ancient history which we already covered free of cost. Ara Sharma lectures are there. Please go and watch that. Okay. So here uh, uh, Vinay Pitaka said sets the rules of everything like how these bhikkhus or the monk, Buddhist monk should uh, participate in debate, what are the rules uh, to do voting there, then the secret ballot system was there. So many things were there. This including in our Guptas and Cholas also. In Cholas Tamil Nadu textbook I have taught you already, they had a voting system kind of thing, secret ballot kind of thing. This and all used to happen. So, but he is anyway not uh, favoring that India is the mother of democracy. Some kind of system is there that he is referring like this. Okay. So, these all I found interesting points and now when Greek historian is there, okay, this Diodorus Siculus, he described India, that is at the time of whom? Time of Alexander the Great, who invaded India at the time of 326 BC and he couldn't enter India properly and after that he died also soon. So, that person uh, uh, recorded that during that time, during that time this historian uh, recorded that independent and democratic republics existed in India. Okay, because Alexander had actually got impressed by India's system, India's kingdom and everything uh, which was there. Okay, I think it was uh, the uh, Nanda dynasty or some dynasty was there during that time when uh, he was about to enter India. So, like this, uh, he was impressed and there were independent and democratic republics that existed in India during those times. Okay, which include a monarch or a raja and a deliberative assembly that met regularly and discussed all the major state discussions. Meaning like we have parliament meetings and all now, those days they used to discuss Okay, the Gana Sanghas had full financial, administrative and judicial authority and elected the Raja who therefore was not a hereditary monarch. Meaning it's not like one uh, king is there, then he will die, his son will become king, then his son will become king. It's not like the hereditary. There is an election process, there is a proper uh, discussion process. So, there was a kind of democracy. Okay, the Raja reported to the assembly and in some states was assisted by a council of nobles also. So, that means you have a cabinet also, you have a ministry also. So, there used to exist some things which the Greek person has told. Okay, but Shashi Tharoor is not agreeing, but the Greek person has told. The Buddhist scripture in Pali provide a vivid depiction of the city state of Vaishali during the 5th century BC. Okay. Where they describe groups that manage their own affairs, meaning there will be different, different like warrior group is there, economic related one uh, group is there, uh, religious uh, uh, sadhu, sannyasi type one uh, fraternity is there and then they are telling uh, uh, these organizations are usually designated as Gana or Sangha which is important one or Gana or Sangha, but the less important political structures are called Sreni or Guild. Okay. The Sreni and Guild both were asked in UPSC prelims already. Okay. Like a merchant group or anyone who is forming a group there, they even do sometimes banking functions. They sometimes do judicial functions. So, that Sreni and Guild uh, was also there during those times. Okay. The term Gana and Sangha usually meaning multitude, meaning maybe there are fight and kings together or fight and people are there who will rule the uh, place. Okay. Multitude. But by the 6th century BC, it, the word had a different meaning, self-governing multitude. Okay, earlier it was like just group of kings. Now it's a governing proper group of kings. Okay, then the decisions were taken by the Sangha member themselves and the governing style was stabilized by conventions applicable to those groups. The strongest of these groups functioned as sovereign government, very similar to republic, meaning every Gana Sangha, everything may not become popular or famous. Some will become popular and they will become like a republic, which I already showed you, Lichavis and other examples in the Bihar UP area, I have already shown you. Then if you take uh, this one, uh, next again about Ambedkar, he is again catching Ambedkar. Ambedkar was somewhat more skeptical of the Gandhian ideal of the self-governing village republic. Meaning Gandhi always uh, told like village is a model, a proper model where government should come, local government should come. And later we had also by 1992-93, we established our 73rd-74th amendment and we uh, made a separate laws for rural and uh, urban administration. Okay, But before that time, still, Gandhi used to tell village uh, these things, even in a DPSP, article 40 something. Okay. 44, 45 range, one article will be there where Gandhi tells about uh, local village administration, about Khadi industry, about cottage industry, all those things he used to tell. So, again, Ambedkar but was not in agreement with uh, Gandhi's idea of village because Ambedkar saw villages as a cesspool of caste oppression and social and economic backwardness considering from the Dalit point of view. From his point of view, he is looking and telling there is full caste oppression there, full socio-economic backwardness is there for people. Then how can you tell village is a good model? Okay, village 
everybody is still believing in caste system so it is um, if you see uh, the indian village to be a sink of localism a den of ignorance narrow mindedness and communalism is actually quote okay it's quoted by uh, ambedkar shashidharu is telling it is true that a sort of democracy prevailed in ancient indian village meaning ancient okay so they again quoting kautilya kautilya's uh, arthashastra okay kautilya uh, and uh, vishnu gupta and chanakya these are all same person okay kautilya chanakya vishnu gupta is same person so he in his arthashastra gives a comprehensive account of the system of village administration prevailing in antiquity and evidence of the village panchayat is also discerned in the mauryan and chola which i told mauryan time and chola time and also the uh, golden era uh, time of the gupta all these times some form of ancient governing system was there okay but ambedkar was right he is telling to point a major flaw in the ancient democratic practice the omission of an entire class of people that is you have everything fine but still you had that varna system kind of thing where one group is avoided you are governing you are doing things all fine but one group is untouchable one group is uh, being exploited they have no rights they have to wait serve and submit they are there to do or they are there to die they have no rights because they are outside the village republic and because they are outside the so called republic uh, it's like because they are outside the hindu fold itself hindu group so that he is criticizing okay and again he is telling it's not only india greece also now he is criticizing greece also there were slaves there were barbarians they had no rights they, until the 20th century another group in modern democracies and all like usa and all women women is the one who is now uh, being kept aside they are not giving voting rights and all these things india is one of the uh, only country i think or few countries who directly when we giving adult franchise meaning everybody voting power we gave for everyone 18 years and above we didn't that time tell like uh, it will be uh, this thing it will be uh, the women separate or men separate that we didn't do in the britishers time we had only people who had property only people who are kings or some people only has election uh, uh, participation right but once we became independent we told everybody equally has the right to vote okay and it's even now it's like that but there were countries like usa and other countries who did not give voting right to women or all women or maybe to the black women like that many many things were there in usa so this and all he is telling the every system how much ever you claim you had democracy there are problems also okay Uh, and then within the restricted category of male citizens therefore the ancient indian village republics were just as democratic as the city states as ancient greece meaning greece also did uh, uh, this thing discrimination you also did discrimination so you have no right to call uh, you as the mother of democracy okay so is again again going and telling the same thing now the final slide american political scientist okay one person he told efforts to create institutions that limited the power of any one actor in the political system are to be found in many parts of the world no single society can claim credit for it meaning this person also told nobody can tell, tell like we are the mother of democracy we are the once everybody has their own uh, problems indian democracy is as ancient as greek democracy and both evolved independently meaning they did not inspire from each other and uh, as did other states with assemblies throughout the rest of the world okay so instead of conceiving of democracy as something that was invented it is better to think as it is one of the elemental form of government common to all of humanity okay so democracy is our gift to ourselves though of course we must protect it since like all gift it can be snatched away okay it's a gift only but what if somebody snatch away and so he is telling that only ambedkar also told again ambedkar ambedkar also told that uh, he feared that one day it can become undemocratic also now we'll start constitutional democracy but later if someone comes who is like uh, full support is there for him dictatorship comes then popular support is for one person so he is anyway you know what he is targeting so like that he is telling and so democracy may go away so finally it is fair to say that we have been warned so we are going back to the title okay meaning it's a gift but it's a warning also democracy so this is how you write a main answer on essay also you have to connect and write things whatever you want but each time you should go back to the main core topic also like that if you do only you will get more marks okay so this overall i found an interesting article for reading so i thought of covering it now the second article pm usha scheme which you can see pradhan mantri uchchatar shiksha abhiyan okay so this is actually we already had a scheme we are just upgrading and launching it or linking it with the new education policy 2020 which the government is trying to uh, enroll the news is this thing 14 states and union territories are yet to sign the mou with the ministry of education mandating the implementation of national education policy okay meaning this uh, scheme was actually for giving fund to the states to develop their universities to bring in technology for research everything there used to be a scheme okay this uh, rusa scheme was there that i'll talk teach you now so that now just replaced with uh, rusa became pm usha that's all 
दैट वॉज राष्ट्रीय उच्चतर शिक्षा अभियान ना उट इज प्रधानमंत्री उच्चतर शिक्षा अभियान ओके दैट मीन सुन ली सो इट वॉज एक्चुअली फॉर गिविंग फंडिंग टू द स्टेट्स सेंटर विल गिव सेंटर विल गिव द फंड एंड पार फोर्टी पर्सेंट आई थिंक स्टेट्स विल पुट रिमेनिंग सिक्सटी परसेंट सेंटर विल गिव दिस वॉज द प्लान बट नाउ दे हैव लिंक्ड द स्कीम टू द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी एंड टेलिंग दैट स्टेट शुड साइन एंड एम ओ यू मेमोरेंडम ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग विद द सेंटर एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर टेलिंग दैट ओके यू आर एग्रींग फॉर नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी ओनली देन वील रिलीज द फंड्स ओके बट फोर्टीन स्टेट्स लाइक इंडिया सॉरी केरला वेस्ट बंगाल एंड ऑल डिड नॉट साइन इट सो दैट इज द डिस्कशन हियर ओके सो फर्स्ट द स्टैटिक पार्ट इन द लाइट ऑफ नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी दिस आर यू एस ए स्कीम हैज बीन अपग्रेडेड एंड लॉन्च एस पी एम उषा इन जून टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉट इज आर यू एस ए इट इज अ सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम स्पॉन्सर्ड मीन्स हाफ और लिटिल बिट सेंटर विल पुट लिटिल बिट स्टेट विल पुट दट इज कॉल स्पॉन्सर्ड ओके दैट वॉज लॉन्च लॉन्ग बैक इट टेन इयर्स एगो टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन सो दिस वॉज एम डेट प्रोवाइडिंग स्ट्रैटेजिक फंडिंग टू higher education institution throughout the country to improve the overall quality of existing higher education institution then uh, conforming to norms meaning central will put some norms that if you follow correctly you will keep getting funds okay and then ensure governance academic examination reforms and establish backward and forward linkages meaning uh, forward means the students should get employment backward means you should uh, see the syllabus and everything properly so the norms should be followed so backward forward linkages should be there and uh, uh, employment should be there self reliance should be there atmanirbhar bharat we should target okay meaning everything we here itself we do in india itself skilling is there job is there everything is there and you should devote yourself to research and innovation this is the overall idea of the rusa scheme which is there since 10 years okay and the special features again if you want points for your main answer uh, multidisciplinary education and research university meaning this meru concept meaning you make your education institute or university as a multidiscipline thing and uh, it will support 35 such state university each state university will get 100 crore each this is the rusa features okay you will make model degree colleges you will enhance your university and you will get more grants you will focus on remote and aspirational areas meaning there will be this maoist affected area or some maybe like kashmir some areas other which are like education was very weak all these places you will improve the enrollment ratio ger gross enrollment ratio of students you will improve then gender inclusion women uh, girls and boys both will equally uh, get uh, admissions okay skills will be upgraded employable uh, chances will be there so all these things ict information and communication technology the latest uh, uh, digital classrooms uh, smart learning okay artificial intelligence everything will be there research will be there so this is the overall agenda of rusa now what happened is it is just linked to national education policy and telling now the funds will be dispersed if you are signing the national education policy also so that states won't like some states so by mandating states and union territories to implement the national education policy 2020 and adopt contentious academic criteria in order to avail fund from this pm usha the ministry of education appears to have made the central scheme exclusivist okay meaning centers like kind of forcing the states now to meaning you want funds means you come and sign this okay then only we can implement it so this on guidelines of the new scheme which is an improvised version of rusa to ensure all those things i told you already uh, only 22 states and ut's have joined now okay and they have signed the mou remaining are not signing like west bengal tamil nadu kerala and uh, other 14 states refused to get on board okay so here only if you sign that then you will be like uh, uh, ready like okay or accept that okay we will follow the guidelines of the national credit framework choice based credit system four year undergraduate program many things are there okay but without agreeing to these conditions states cannot avail share in the fund which will be around 12000 crore uh, plan is there so that the states will get only if you are ready for allowing us to implement the national education policy okay and as i told 40% funding is by the uh, state government remaining 60% fund is what they want it and if they want they have to sign this so few states are strongly opposed okay they did not like the draft and whatever is there in the this thing written they did not like the plan okay tamil nadu is telling they will have their own state education policy we don't want this national education policy okay so again another thing if you know in our 7th uh, schedule we have uh, these things in our constitution union list state list concurrent list union list is something meaning like banking and other communication there are some things defense in which laws can be made only by the center states cannot make a law on those things okay same like that state list means uh, i think agriculture and uh, some other things are there okay market and agriculture and things where 
only the states makes laws okay center if have to law they have to do in consultation that is why the farm bills the farm bills and all when it came and all it was debate and finally center has to withdraw it okay state list then there is concurrent list concurrent list means both center and the state can make laws example education is there under that okay and some judicial functions are there i think wildlife is there this and all comes under the concurrent list these are all there in your lakshmikan textbook when you study static you will understand so uh, what happened is during the emergency time indira gandhi uh this thing right the education was ideally under state list okay education i think police station the many things were under state list so this thing education was taken from state list and put into concurrent list during uh, uh emergency time without even consulting the states so now they are asking put back the education in the state list itself because tamil nadu and all wants to make their own laws they don't want to follow central law okay then again um they are telling pm usha scheme you have tailored in such a way that you are trying to impose uh, uh national education policy then there is multiple entry exit options in degree and all and you are forcing four year degree because there, you know many people do three year degree only now so poor people and all those people maybe they cannot afford an extra year they cannot pay the fees for a fourth year so this forcing four year undergraduate program that and all is not going well with these states this 14 states okay so again socially backward people cannot afford money and time extra year to get a degree then uh, there is even states which are supporting the national education policy example meghalaya uh, they are also telling we don't approve of every new thing which you are telling that for funding you have to do this and we have only i think one university for which work is going on and then how will we get the, this thing so imp- increase the number of beneficiary unit like in our meghalaya state also this many this many universities should get funding like there's something something the those who approve the national education policy they are also raising concern okay so ministry of education should negotiate better terms with these dissenting states respecting the essence of corporate federalism okay federalism itself is center and state working together okay exam niti ayog is a model of federalism so this is the discussion in pm usha scheme so now again test series if you missed please come and enroll don't miss out that offers if you are a serious aspirant else later again these things will be open but that time we may not be able to give you the offers okay and also time will go away now you have 250 to 80 days to study don't reduce the number of days you have okay so we'll wind up tell me in comment section do you like all these things uh, whatsapp me and follow on instagram thank you and have a nice day happy independence day one more time